Hello and welcome to the first in my new series talking a little bit more around the anomaly series of uh, threat intelligence solutions. Uh, the first I'm going to start with, and it really makes a lot of sense to start with uh, what we call Stacks. Uh, Stacks is a Stix taxi component. It actually runs as a VM and it allows you to download, view and look at, investigate through threat intelligence data specifically. Uh, it is actually free. It's a free download. It's a, a virtual machine. In this example, I'm actually picking up from the first stage of configuration. Uh, normally, you would actually import the OVA file into your uh, virtualization platform of choice and go from there. It involves passwords and so on and some default things that are already set. It's in the PDF setup guide, so I strongly recommend you read that. But the process is actually very simple and straightforward. You have to change some passwords. and. To, to cut that out, I haven't actually included this in this video. But once you actually do that initial uh, setup of the OVA, give it some new passwords, you're actually dumped into the user interface here. So this is where I'm picking up. Now, um, you have a number of choices here with regards to which uh, taxi service. So uh, that's T-A-X-I-I, -I, taxi service that you can use. Uh, Anomaly actually provides a free system uh, that you can use, a free feed that's called Limo. Uh, of course, the joke there is, what's better than a taxi? A limo. So that's the reason why it's called uh, limo. Now, I'm actually going to pick that up and we'll just use that limo service uh, just to you to demonstrate uh, how easy this is. So we landed at this configuration page and we actually just want to use the, the limo service. I'll actually do another video where we'll add in a different service just to illustrate that point as well. So we click uh, use anomaly limo and it's already pre-configured to use that uh, taxi service. So uh, there we go. That, it's as simple as that. We'll actually go in and take a look at that settings in a second and have a little bit of a dig into what is taxi, which is the carrying protocol effectively for doing this. So let's try stacks and we jump in. So uh, this is the very latest version as of December. Uh, and we can see this is 3.2. There's a little bit of information around what's new. It does force you to look at that installation and administration guide. I do strongly recommend that as a starting point to dig into the documentation and, and what you can and can't do with the system. Uh, but I do need to uh, accept the end user license agreement. So I just click that, press agree, and there we go. We've got some data already in this. We've got some nice little charts. Uh, we can see that we've already pulled in some data in the last seven days as well, because obviously I've just done it. We can see that we've we've got different sources here with regards to some of the data, but it is coming from limo.anomaly.com. So I'll dig in a little bit more around that uh, data feed, the taxi feed that we're using, which is called Anomaly Limo, and I'll dig a little bit more around some of the uh, configuration options there. But you can see we've got some data, and we'll dig into that in a second. But let me just take a quick look at what we do have with regards to the configuration here. So you actually define in what we call a site, uh, and a site refers to uh, the particular feed that we're getting the data from. So in this case, it's Anomaly Limo. Now, what you do do is you connect to a particular URL to discover what available feeds are there. Uh, there is a little bit of authentication in there. Uh, it, it's just free, so it's just guest guest for reference. Again, that's in the PDF guide, uh, and you do get that data feed for free. Uh, we could, we discover what's available, and we view it from there. So let's just take a little, little bit more detail around the actual feed there. So when we go in, when you poll against that uh, top level URL, again with that particular username, password of guest and guest, uh, we actually are using the very latest version of the taxi protocol here, version two, because it makes it a lot more efficient and uh, feature rich with regards to feeds that are, that are available. So as we can see, we can scroll down a little bit further. We have a whole bunch of feeds that are available. If we have multiple pages, we'll see that down there. But you can see here, we're pulling in a whole bunch of uh, both anomaly feeds feeds as well as some uh, open source feeds as well. So we can see things like abuse.ch and dshield and Lehigh and cybercrime feeds as well, as well as some specific anomaly relevant stuff around a threat briefing as well. We can see that since the last poll that we've done, there's some new observables, so indicators effectively, and we can see whether we want to enable or uh, disable those specifically. So of course, if I want to, I can actually just poll again. Uh, it'll then just call against that URL, against that particular feed, and then pull down anything new from that. But it is part of a scheduled process where it's going to go and, and update uh, new observables against those particular feeds as well. So it just runs that. Uh, in this example, I don't expect to see anything new because I've just literally configured things with regards to getting that threat intelligence.
if I wanted to, I could actually add a new uh, feed as well. Uh, of course, I could just add another site in there and go through the basic configuration so I can give it a name, a discovery URL, uh, if there's any additional authentication needed and go from there. Like I say, I'm going to dig in on another video to how you would configure a different taxi feed. But in this case, I'm just using Anomaly Limo because it's already pre-rolled and ready to run. Uh, I could also change some of the setup parameters here. So how often do I want to uh, update things? Uh, I can change the frequency around this if I want to use a proxy and so on. And of course, I'm using the free version. So in this example, I'm, if I want to dig into the details, I'm actually going to use the what we call Stacks Cloud uh, platform to actually view the, the actual data around that threat intelligence that I've downloaded. There is an also a mechanism to allow you to automatically update Stacks itself. Like I say, it's available as a pre-rolled OVA file for your virtualization platform of choice, and it will actually update itself with the latest versions as well. So do I do recommend keeping that enabled because it will pull down the updates and changes to the platform as well. So if I go back to dashboards for a second, we can see there's a whole bunch of data. We can see there's things like uh, malware, MD5 hashes. We can see some Tor uh, IP addresses that are defined here, some phishing URLs and so on. So if I want to, I can dig into there. But let's just take a quick look at uh, some of the activity and some of the data that's available here. I'm going to do another video that's going to go into a lot more detail around what this is, what it is, and how it operates, and what we're presented here. But already we can see that there is threat intelligence data ready for us to look at, investigate, and do comparisons with. So let's just take a quick look at one of these. Uh, this is actually a, a scan IP that's got a very high confidence. Uh, I'll talk more about what confidence is later, but let's just dig into the details for this. So again, I just click the link. And what it does is it opens up a new, uh, in this case, uh, Chrome browser tab, where I dig into the details around that particular IP and what it's relevant to. So we can see very quickly, we've got some data around what this means. Uh, 95 confidence means it's scored out of 100. We're actually very confident around the data that's displayed here. We can see that the severity, this is the security relevance. Uh, it's scored from low to very high. So in this case, it's scored as medium. So we're pretty confident around the data. We're also fairly confident around what it actually is from a security relevance point of view. And what we've also done is we've got some additional data around what this is, what it means, and what the relevance is. So we can see that it's a scanning IP address. We can see the actual uh, indicator there. In this case, it's an IP address. Uh, some additional data around country, ASN, so physical locations, uh, and what it's uh, linked to as an organization. We have some external jump uh, links here, so if I wanted to, dig some more de details around this with virus total or showdown for example and we see a nice little tree of what we've already done with regards to this particular ip and additional enrichment that we've done around this data as well so again if i scroll down a little bit further we get the additional information here so what we want to do is not just have a list of IP addresses. We want to have the context and where this has come from to help us understand more about what this actually means. So in this example, we can see it's been reported by two different sources. So in this case, uh, Packet Mail as well as DShield. Uh, both have reported very high confidence around this, and we can both see that it's both active. So this is something that's real, that we've got a strong confidence in this with a fairly high relevance around uh, this particular uh, security relevance here. So I've gone from having very simple setup for uh, getting the intelligence. I've looked at a particular element here, and I've already started to get enrichments and look at what's going on with regards to this uh, and where the data's come from. But like I say, that's just a separate tab that's opened up. And of course, I can jump back here. What I can do is very quickly and easily search for particular elements as well. So, okay, I just clicked on one particular observable to dig more details around it. But say, for example, I spotted something unusual in my proxy server with regards to a, a URL that's been called, and I want to search through. And of course, I could just search here. But actually, this is something I've already seen in my environment. So I can just, in this case, just quickly paste that particular, uh, uh, in this case, URL into there, and it's going to search very quickly around that. So in this example, I can see that there's a link here. Let's let's dig in further details around this. Again, a new tab is opened. Let's look at the details with regards to this. And again, we're getting the data very quickly and easily with regards to what's going on here. So we can see that there's something a little bit unusual around some of the naming here. This is looking a little bit suspicious, hence the reason why we picked this up on our proxy server. Now we can start looking, okay, we've only got 70 confidence here. So we're not that confident around it, but what we are seeing is this is a very high. So 
So uh, th this is something relevant. This is something security relevant that we need to understand what's going on. We can see this is a URL. It's a phishing URL specifically. It's linked to a particular IP. And now we can start digging in further details around the intelligence here. So we can see that this has already been reported. It's actually been reported by Fish Tank that's been uh, part of this as well. It's linked to a particular IP address. Because it's a, a, a URL, a domain relevant here, we're actually going to start looking up and seeing some additional enrichment here. So in this case, passive DNS, what else has this been reported on? So uh, we can reference this against Spam House. We can see that this is also uh, been linked to a couple of other IP addresses. So we might want to take some of this data and understand uh, maybe we just got a particular hit and resolution around a particular IP address, which again, we can click in and dig into and see what's going on around this. So uh, it, as it just renders the data here, we can see there's a whole bunch of additional uh, passive DNS resolutions here. And not only just that suspicious domain, but a whole bunch of others as well. Oh, this is looking pretty suspicious with regards to the data here. So let me just go back a second. Like I say, we've got additional IP addresses there, but we might want to dig in a little bit further around what this uh, what this actually means uh, and what the relevance is as well. So. Again, we've gone from having something, maybe like I say, a hit within our proxy server, just doing a quick search within our threat intelligence within Stacks to look at that, uh, understood that there is something pretty serious here. It is active and it is very high. We've seen some additional attached information with regards to IP addresses. And of course, we can see when this was active and not active. You know, look, look how quickly these things swap and change. Uh, you know, we've had a, at least two IP addresses uh, within, in this particular example, within uh, one particular day uh, of the resolutions here. And again, now we can start digging in the communications of what's going on here. So uh, it, it's a powerful, effective and simple way for you to be able to start digging into what something looks suspicious and then start to understand and look at how that relates to additional communications and data that you might have seen going across your environment uh, specifically. So let me just jump back to Stacks again, just briefly, uh, and just, again, go back to my landing dashboards. Uh, we can see all the data. We can see the information. It's very easy for us to use. Quick setup, uh, just using the Anomaly Limo uh, taxi feed specifically. We've then been able to search using the Activity tab and then very quickly look at that data in a very, very simple and straightforward way. So that's a very, very quick walkthrough, uh, the initial setup and initial usage of using the Anomaly Stacks solution. I hope you do find that useful, and I'll put some links below on where you would actually go to uh, register and then download the Stack Solution, uh, and please do take a look. Thank you very much.